Hi, my name is Richard Azirga from Microsoft, and in this video, we're going to look at exercise three of the Salesforce Office Add-in Workshop. So in the previous two exercises, we did things like build your very first Office Add-in, and then we connected it with Office JS so that we could interact with the Excel workbook that we were using that add-in with. In this third ex exercise, we're going to take that even further. Rather than writing static rows of data into a table of Excel, we're actually going to connect into Salesforce APIs and pull in live uh, opportunity data that we can write into the Excel workbook. So let's get started. One of the downsides of using an in-browser editor is that they don't handle authentication flows very well. So because we're going to be connecting into Salesforce APIs, which are secure, um, we need a little bit of help to make that possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage a really simple little hosting proxy, and it's going to make it very easy for us to use. But the way we do this is we're going to add a reference to this sfproxy.js file that lives out on a server. So I'm going to go ahead and, and add that reference to the head of our HTML documents. So if I come back to our project and go to the home.html, up at the top, all of my script references are already here. So things like jQuery, Office JS. I'm going to add that reference to that proxy. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in here. And you can see it's there and ready for us to, to use. All right, let's see what our next step is. So step two is we need to change the button click event. So we had this button export. And in the previous exercise, when it was clicked, we automatically went and just wrote some data to Excel. In this case, we need to query Salesforce. But we can't do that until we've actually authenticated. So we're going to change out the click event to use this SF login button, Salesforce login button. So it's a special extension on this button that we're going to be able to use. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. The other thing I'll point out here is that the callback for this login button extension is going to pass us a token. So the way we're going to communicate with the Salesforce APIs is we're going to pass what's called an access token in the header of all our requests. And, and with that token, Salesforce will allow us to inter interact with the data that's in there. Without it, it would provide a, it would give us an access denied. Even, even though we logged in, it would give us an access denied. So let's go ahead and swap this out in our code. So if I go back to home.js, uh, you can see here is our button click event. So we had this sales, uh, this button export, and there's the click. So rather than using a click, I'm going to change that to be a Salesforce login. And our callback is going to provide that token that we need. So that's um, our important kind of modification to that button click event is make it a login button as well as getting data. So let's go back and see what our next step is. All right, step three says you should validate your token that it's not null so that you can basically ensure you have that before you perform any additional logic. So what it's saying is we want to wrap all of our logic into a, um, a just a condition that checks to see if that token is null. So let's go back over here and we'll do exactly that. So right after I, I get my callback, I'm going to do that check. So I'm going to say if token is not equal to null, then we'll allow all of this logic to occur. So I'm going to go ahead and, and basically wrap everything that's in here in that function. So I'll go ahead and indent this. So there we go. Everything now is inside that token check. And actually, just to make things nice, in the event the token does come back null, I'm going to put a little uh, an else here that just says, go ahead and notify the user. So you can see I'm outputting an error message that says, we had an error establishing, establishing connection to Salesforce. So now I have all of my like primary logic wrapped in a, a token check to make sure that I have a good token. Let's move on to the next step. 
So now we need to build a Salesforce object query language query. So a, an SOQL uh, statement. Specifically, we need to build a select, our select fields and our where clause that we're going to use against the um, opportunities uh, data object. So the first thing we're gonna do is modify our code that we use to initialize the headers to the code below here. And so let me go ahead and, and, and copy this. I'll just copy the whole block. And let's go find where we were initializing our headers. It's actually the very first line after our, our button click. You can see here there's the initialize headers. And really all we were doing was looping through all the fields and basically just um, adding them as a header. I'm gonna change this out now because we're gonna, in, in addition to uh, defining those headers, this is gonna do a few extra things. It's gonna build up our select statement. So you can see here we're defining select fields and then we're looping through all of those fields and we're adding them with a comma in between each one. So that's gonna basically be the select fields in our select statement. Awesome. The next thing we need to do is build up our where clause. And so if you remember back in exercise two, we created all these toggle buttons for stage types. So we built all these different stages in our HTML and when you click on them, they toggled. Here's where we're actually gonna use those buttons. So we're gonna add something that looks to see if they are active and for every active button, we're gonna add it to our where clause. So we're gonna add an additional stage name equals whatever, you know, this stage name equals this. And so we're gonna concatenate all of these different where clauses and put them together with ors. So if it's, you know, maybe the stage type is um, closed, maybe the stage type is one, um, we, can, we can kind of pull, pull all those together into one statement. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we'll put it right after where we're defining our uh, where call or our select fields. So here's our select fields. So I'll go ahead and insert that right here. So there's our where. And um, again, just looking at the code a little bit, it's looping through all of the active buttons. And for each one of the active buttons, we're gonna go and insert its stage name into the where clause. Awesome. So let's go back. The next thing we need to do is combine the select fields and the where clause into a single SOQL statement. So let's go ahead and do this. This is really just concatenating a few strings together. So we'll go back in here and right after we've defined both the select and the where, we'll go ahead and define the full query. And if, if you look at what's going on in this query, it's basically saying select from some variable or select these fields from opportunities where, um, and we can inject a, our, our where clause. So in this case, we're basically doing a replace to put in both our select fields and our where clause. All right. Next, we had some hard-coded data. So in, in the previous uh, exercise, in exercise two, we had two hard-coded rows that we were basically adding to Excel. In this case, we want to actually call out to Salesforce and perform an actual query for opportunities. And so the way we're going to do that is by performing a REST query. And so this is showing us how we're going to perform that using jQuery. So we're going to use the dollar sign dot Ajax. We're going to provide, provide a URL to um, the REST endpoint that we want. In this case, we're going against um, our service instance and then saying services slash data slash v20 slash query. And then we're providing that SOQL statement as the query. One really important aspect here is that we're passing the access token that we got when we, we logged in in the header. So it's a, it's a bearer token um, in the header um, using the authorization key. So you can see um, that here. And so let's go ahead and, and copy this in our, our page. So we're gonna actually replace our hard-coded data here. So here's all that hard-coded data. And we're gonna remove all that and add a real query 
against Salesforce. So there's our query. And you can see I have a to-do to go and actually put um, some logic in once we get a successful callback. So you can see I'm specifying a URL, my headers that has that token in it, a success and an error. So if we have a if we have trouble calling the API, you can see it's going to provide an output to us. But we're hoping for the happy path here, the success. And so let's look at what sort of logic we're going to put into the, that success. So if I go back here, um, finally it's giving me um, basically what the completed solution will look like. What I ultimately want to do is the data that comes back from our REST query is going to be JSON data. And we're going to ultimately loop through that and add rows um, in our office table for every single one. And then we're going to call the exact same set data async. So let's first do that. Here's our set data async that we've, we already have. We actually probably want to move this. We're going to kind of cut it out and we're going to move it inside of our success. Because we're not going to actually write anything to Excel unless we get a successful um, call. And so we'll go ahead and put it in here um, inside of that success. So what we need to do is we need to loop through all the data and write it to Excel. And so let's go look at how we will do that uh, by going back to our script. So if we go down here, let's go find where we're actually making the rest call. Here's our rest call. And then you can see I have a little block of code that loops through records and adds it to our table. So let's just grab this one little block here. And we'll go ahead and, and paste this in uh, the top of our success. So what this is doing, it's looping through all of the records. And then for each one, it's basically um, putting the data in as a new row. So at this point, we should have a completed solution that actually connects to Salesforce APIs. So let's actually give it a run. We'll go ahead and go over here to run project. We'll go ahead and say run. We'll launch the app. So here's Excel online loading. There's our opportunity editor. And within our opportunity editor, we can select the various stages that we want to pull into our Excel workbook so that we can analyze it in more detail. So I'll maybe select a few of these. We'll go with maybe prospecting, qualification, maybe perception, analysis, negotiation, proposal, and we'll just do a bunch of these. As soon as I click export to Excel, what should happen is I'm going to get a login to Salesforce dialog that pops up. Because remember, we can't go and get data from Salesforce without actually authenticating and granting our um, granting access. So I'll go ahead and sign in here with my Salesforce developer account. So the, remember, this was a prerequisite is that you have a Salesforce developer account. So I'll go ahead and, and sign in here with my, my developer account. And when I log into Salesforce, it's gonna finish the whole login process and it'll close the dialog. And you can see it loaded the data. So it automatically pulled in all that data for us here. In fact, if I were to go down here to the bottom, I can insert an entirely new table. So if I wanted to insert a table here, maybe in this case, I'll just go with all of the closed um, deals. I'll just select closed one and closed lost. If I say export to Excel, the pop-up comes up and immediately closes because I'm already signed in. And you can see it, it pulls the data into Excel. So congratulations, you have completed the Salesforce Office add-in workshop. You built your very first Office add-in. You modified that add-in so it, that it wrote data into Excel. And then you modified it a little bit more so that it actually connected into Salesforce APIs and pulled in opportunity data into your Excel workbook.